Yeah. Well, talking about bicycle, that's how me and my brother learned to ride. Because we only have one bicycle, my mom's old bicycle between us. So when we were young, and once you know how to cycle, right, we used to take our turns. Okay. So at night, when it's quiet, then only mom will allow us to cycle. So we'll take our, our bicycle and we cycle all the way from my house, all the way down to where the uh, clock tower is. So into the financial district, because it's very quiet there. And then there's a big roundabout. So we'll cycle there and then we'll take our turns. And I'll cycle back and then my brother's turns to cycle, you know, and then come back just for the fun of it. Yeah. Cycling is, is funny. So over there as well, like on uh, Ting Kong Se, you know, the uh, seven or eight day of Chinese New Year where people pray to the uh, heavenly God. The, the, the nine emperor god, uh, is it? No, not the nine emperor, the heavenly god. I think on the seventh or eighth day of Chinese New Year, because it's very big for business people. Oh, okay. So along the roads there, people will set up like tables, high high tables, and then they put sugar cane, and then they will do their offerings. Sure. So then a lot of people will also let go firecrackers. Firecrackers. Okay. So yeah, so the yeah, so when we were kids, we used to because at night the street is alive with all these activities going on. So we used to like to cycle around and then some people will put firecrackers and as time goes by, their firecrackers actually can chase you. So as you cycle, the firecrackers chase you and you have to cycle as fast as you can. <laughs> <laughs> so that's like living. Yeah, this is like growing up in, in uh, Chinatown, that kind of lifestyle, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I can imagine. I think, I think maybe the businesses also would, would, would release the firecrackers as a way to ward off bad luck and whatnot. So I can imagine how lively that street must be. It's all full of businesses. So it must be like yes. one, 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 one house, one, one, one shop lot, one business after another. It's just, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Off. It's very, very, it's very, I don't know if it's still happening there. I would think so because it's like part of this businessman, um, you know, offerings to the heavenly God, I think. But, yeah, it, it, well, well it, if it's... Uh, Fire crackers have been banned in, in Malaysia for oh, a long, okay. long time. But people still, you know, they, they still bring it in. And it. Yeah, they, they, they do close an eye to, to it. You know, it, it used to be only the Chinese uh, uh, Chinese New Year will have Pang Pao, right? But now Hari, Hari Raya, also people want to Pang Pao as well. So uh, uh, Deepa Bali also, you know, people want to play with fire, firecrackers and whatnot. So people do import them in. As far as I know, it's against the law, but um, uh, it, it's so openly, you know, and, and what can you do? People are looking for extra income for the holidays. So, mm. yeah, the authorities come also, you know, what, what the, you can shut down one or two, but again, you know, they will operate from the boot of the car. But I, I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't bother. I think, I think this is part of the festivity. I think it's better to educate the kampong kids not to play, not, I mean, not to pull around with the fire because they, they would open the packets and then take out the, 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 yeah. the powder. And then mix them up. So it's the mixing up which is a problem because different firecrackers does different things. Yeah, some explode and some just sparkle. So they, when they mix it up, so the exploding one with the sparkling one, then it becomes this huge. Uh, then they'll lose their fingers la, and all that. La. So yeah. that's why it was yeah. banned many, many years ago. La. Yeah. 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 So 